We're going to come in with quite a bit of airflow here, so I have taped off some of the surrounding components just in case. Now, if you aim towards the edge of the board, you shouldn't have too much trouble here, but again, exercise, caution, and use your judgment. I did preheat the board here, which uh, you'll see coming up here shortly, using 410 degrees Celsius from about an inch and a half away or so. So I like to do that in the beginning just to kind of get the entire area warmed up because what we're shooting for here is to get the board hot enough that we melt all four of these anchor points that go around the port and allow the heat to saturate all the way through to the other side where the pads are because if those are connected and you try pulling this thing off obviously you're going to have some problems the good news is you can actually see where the traces go on the opposite side if something gets pulled up but uh, that second row that's on the inside which you'll see coming up here shortly it's kind of a pain to run jumpers to that so we want to avoid that if at all possible now i'm going to speed the video up here and after i've got the board heated up I do go in quite a bit closer and I raise the temperature up to 480. I've had my airflow set at 80 liters per minute the entire time, just in case you're wondering, but again, your mileage may vary. Now, once we can visually tell that all four of these anchor points are liquefied, you should be able to just nudge the port and it should move around freely. And when it does, it'll take minimal force just to let this thing kind of drop through to the bottom. These two anchor holes on the left hand side are going to take a little patience to get them cleared out. So I'm going to speed up the video here, but this is all pretty straightforward. Just uh, make sure that you've got plenty of flux. You'll probably have to flow some leaded solder down into here and make sure you have a decent sized soldering iron tip so that you have enough heat to get this stuff to come out. So once we've got those pretty much cleaned out, we are going to flip it over and make sure that we haven't damaged anything and then we'll go ahead and clean up the area where we will be installing the new port. I want to say it's this hole right down here that's kind of a pain. So you're going to want to make sure that you have a good sized soldering iron tip, plenty of flux, and even then you might have to go back and flow a little more leaded solder in there. You can blast this with hot air and use the wick to kind of dip down inside there and get it out. I mean, whatever works for you. I am just a little uh, reserved when it comes to applying heat. Uh, repeatedly and in excess on these boards because if you get too much on there you're going to start floating things off and who knows what you might burn up so if you can do this with an iron I believe this is going to be the safest way All right, I think we're looking pretty decent here. We're gonna get that last bit out. And I know there's a little chunk there next to the hole, but we'll clean that up later on, not a big deal. So go ahead and swab this down, get all that old flux off of the board. And of course, if you wanna apply a low temperature, like 170 or so, you can uh, make that stuff melt so it's easier to remove. Now at this point, I wasn't sure if that was open or not. That is just old flux that's sitting in the hole, but you'll see when we do a dry fit here that everything's gonna sit down. And this is where uh, it gets a little more complicated. Once you're pretty sure you've got everything opened up here, go ahead and take your port and make sure it sits down flush on the board. And if so, we can move on to the next step, which is going to be the fun part. As you can imagine, getting those outer pins connected, not a big deal, but we have a second row on the inside and we really can't see them. So this is going to be, uh, you know, standard for USB-C port installation, quite a bit different than doing something like a micro usb unless you've done one of the older Samsungs that kind of has that section blocked off so that you can't see it. So um, 
That second row there, what we're going to do is basically on both of these, we want to get them nice and tinned so they've got quite a bit of height. So as much solder as you can get on there. And if you want to take this a step further, you can actually add some solder to the port itself so that you've just got plenty. Of course, we want to watch out that we don't have so much that we end up having something run together. But when you do these pads, you want to get it, you know, just as tall as you possibly can without making a mess, if that makes any sense. Now I'm going to zoom in here and I recommend you do the same thing and you'll notice there are a couple of pads that don't look great. We really want to make sure that these are consistent and I can't stress that enough. If you don't have enough solder on this, you're going to have to come back and do the whole thing again. So uh, in the interest of getting this project finished and not having to redo your work, just don't uh, cut any corners here because I, I guarantee you'll regret it if one of these ends up not making contact. All right, so this is looking pretty decent. We are going to go ahead and tape off some of the surrounding components, once again, just to be safe. And here's the fun part. So what we want to do is raise the temperature on the motherboard itself to the point where all of those contacts turn to liquid. Once we know that it's all wet, we can go ahead and set the port down on top of it. And when you do that, you want to make sure, and this is the tricky part, I mean, uh, this thing's got to be level because if it's not completely level, you're, you're going to end up not having a pin connected. Uh, what I generally do is set it down, continue to flow the air onto there. I've got, a, I, I've got my air set at about 60 at this point, and uh, I've lowered the temperature, obviously. We don't need to come in here at 480. You can probably come down to, I want to say, about 350-ish or so. But just make sure you heat this up and you see all of the solder wet. Once you do, we drop the port on top, and then I would give it a bit of a wiggle. We want to make sure that all those pins kind of break through the surface tension of the solder that's on the board already, especially the ground pins, because they take a little more heat to liquefy. And, you know, again, you get one shot at this. If you don't get it right, I suppose, you know, you could always reheat it and come back and uh, kind of move it around again. But you may just be better off taking the whole port off and starting over uh, back about two minutes ago a minute or so back in the video. Uh, the only thing is there's a possibility that if you just have a little too much heat on this, you end up melting the plastic. So there's kind of a fine line you have to walk to make sure, okay, it's ready to go. When it is, you set it down, let the heat run for a little bit longer, and then take it off before anything gets damaged. All right, so you can see I kind of wiggled it around a bit there, kept the air on for a second, and then I'm going to stay as still as I possible can, possibly can because if you move your tweezers, you might lift something up. And again, uh, then we got to go back and reheat it all. Now, it's easy enough to check the pins that you have access to, but what about the other ones that are inside of the port? Well, there is actually a way that we can test those as well. So uh, obviously here you can just go in and make sure that everything's connected, nothing's flowed together. If you look at this from the right angle, which I think I have in the uh, later on the video, you could kind of get your tweezers back into that inner row, but you really don't want to be poking around in there and it's a, it's a real tricky angle to get just right. So 
Um, I came up with an idea and so far this has been working out pretty well for me and I'm going to show you here in just a second. I need to touch one of these up. You can see the one on the far right hand side I think it was uh, which is a ground pin. That one takes a little more heat to get it to sit down properly. Now you can touch all these up, but you know when it comes down to it, they've got to be attached on the inside and the outside pretty much without you uh, going back and, and flowing them with your iron because obviously you can't do the inner part. So we just want to make sure that floating this on to the surface did its job. Uh, the fact that that one didn't take on the right hand side has me a bit concerned at this point, but I ended up kind of lucking out on this one. The inner ones did in fact bond to the board, so that didn't end up being a problem. Um, but if you take your multimeter in diode mode, you can go across from left to right and make sure that these are all reading the correct values. And that obviously would tell you, one, that we've got the pins connected properly, and number two, that we don't have any errors in the system. You know, if you end up getting ground somewhere that you're not supposed to, then you can kind of assume that the power management chip, one of the power management chips, or the USB, um, HDMI encoder, uh, whatever they like to call that, that uh, PS chip on the other side could be bad and that's something that's pretty common when the inside of this port is really mangled. When it comes to the inner connections for this thing, if you flip the board over and look at the back of the port, you can actually do the same thing. So these values will read left to right the same way that the ones on the opposite side did. So I'd encourage you to go ahead, get in here, get your uh, multimeter red uh, diode mode, red probe on ground, go across, and you should have roughly these values from left to right. If you do, you should be in good shape. If you see something looks different or an open line where you're not supposed to have it, then more than likely you didn't get those pins all the way onto the board. And just in case you're wondering, this is what it looks like if you try to get a view of that back row. Uh, it's even harder to get on camera than it is to see, but if you get just the right angle, you can kind of look down inside there, uh, but it's not easy. So going about it this way, not really recommended. From here, it's pretty much downhill. All we have to do is flow solder into these anchor points and confirm that it does go all the way through to the other side of the board. Uh, Again, hard to, hard to explain, but uh, not too much, not too little. So we don't want a big bubble on this side, but we do want to make sure that the solder gets hot enough that it actually flows down through the footing and we have a good bond on both sides because these are what really take the abuse when it comes to people wiggling the ports around on the inside. All right, so we want to warm up the board just uh, with some mild heat and get some isopropyl here and clean all of this flux off because you'll have kind of a mess all over the place. Uh, but we'll get this cleaned up so it looks nice and next to new. And we should be able to put it back together. As you can see here, we can verify that the solder did come all the way through. Uh, hopefully you can see that, it's a little tough to focus on. And once we get it all cleaned up, get all that excess flux off the board, we'll be ready to go. If you found the video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out our weekly Tech Talk live stream. Have a great one and thanks for watching.